What is the most powerful corporation in the world? Uh, There are only a few names that really come to mind, but I think you could certainly make a strong case. Yeah, there's Amazon, there's Apple. I think Google belongs at the very top of the list. Google is a company with a market cap of almost $2 trillion right now. It determines not only what you see when you search, but it controls a whole lot of communication, of email, of advertising dollars online. It has almost cornered the market on advertising dollars, which means that its influence in the flow of information on the Internet, which is basically now the public square, is unparalleled. Nothing really comes close when it comes to that. Plus, they own YouTube. I mean, the the amount of influence Google has in thinking nationally is hard to overstate, globally, actually. And Google has launched, and we have to give a big hat tip here to Christopher Rufo, who is the bane of the critical race theorist defender's existence, because he continues to do something that they have a very hard time with. And that is to get the information out to the people to actually get the primary documents and Clay and I have been going through, we've, we've been combing through this. This is all from a thread that Chris put out, um, and you can read his work at, at Cine Journal, where he shows you what Google, here you go, Google has launched an anti-racism initiative, he writes, claiming that America is a system of white supremacy, that all Americans are raised to be racist, including Ben Shapiro, who is depicted as a layer of, of the white supremacy pyramid, which culminates in genocide. Clay, I I know we're going to go through some of this piece by piece. This is ideological indoctrination at the most powerful company in the world in the most insane and toxic ideas of critical race theory. Didn't they tell us two months ago that critical race theory wasn't really a thing that was being taught anywhere? Yeah. And and I mean, again, this is you. I think you raised a good question. What are the most powerful companies in the world? I think Google is the most powerful company in the world. And if you see the way that they are training their employees right now and you contemplate the incredible power of YouTube, which I look as 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 wildly profitable and powerful as the Google search engine is YouTube for young people. If you have kids, your kids probably don't watch uh, traditional television anymore. My kids have iPads. They watch YouTube. That's where they get almost all of their news. So I would go, this is my top four. This is my Mount Rushmore right now, Buck, of most powerful companies in the world. And the reason why I want to bring it up is they're all doing trainings like these. Uh, listen to this. See if you, what do you think of my top four? Google, Facebook, Apple, and Amazon, I would argue are the four most powerful companies in the world right now now there's probably some chinese companies that are also powerful but in terms of being able to influence the most people i think the most powerful companies in the world are still all american based and all of these companies have been working either covertly or in open marketplace with the democratic party right such that i mean do you think and and look i think it's good for ben shapiro who's a friend of both of ours uh, to be on this list, because I think a lot of people out there are going to look at it and say that makes it crazy. But do you think that Google and YouTube are going to fairly allow Ben Shapiro or you and me, our content to be distributed if they're teaching all of their employees that they are white supremacists, that we are white supremacists, that America is a fundamentally awful place with their pyramid of white supremacy. But, but this goes this goes to how Clay. By the way, I, I agree with your four companies, and I would say that there have not there's not been a period in American history where I'd argue you had companies that had as much influence on the daily lives of Americans and on the future of this country since Standard Oil and Rockefeller right. and ba- you know effectively more powerful than and, the, the central and government even more the, the powerful, treasury arguably than the gilded age than when yeah. all of that was happening you haven't seen anything like this in terms of their political and and financial influence in America in in a hundred years for an individual company nothing corporate America very powerful in general we all know yes. that but when you're talking about what Google can do I mean it can change look they 
without social media, you know, we talked about COVID, and I don't want to get diverted from the critical race theory training because there's such a rich trove of yeah. insanity here, thanks to Chris Rufo's. Uh, it's a whistleblower, by the way. It's not like this was just out there. Someone right. gave this to him. Um, but it, it, Joe Biden doesn't win the election without big tech and the social media giants That's right. tipping the scale for him. So so no let's doubt. just understand, it's not even just the financials. They chose it's, the president. They, they basically helped to pick the president of the United States right now. And I know people are yelling, oh, but all the cheating. Put that aside for a second. We're just yes. the, looking at the social media thing. You can see how much influence they have. And here's more of this. So so that's that's the backdrop for it. We're not picking. It's one thing because, you know, Rufo uh, Clay has pulled training from, I think it was like the, you know, the city of Seattle or something like that. And we expect the local government of Seattle to be completely loony left. Right. I mean, yes, we know. Right. But these are companies. They're determining whether other companies can can live or die on a day to day basis. I mean, their influence is vast. And you brought up. They're training that someone like a, even a very mainstream conservative commentator like Ben Shapiro was somehow on this on this pyramid of white supremacy, along with that, President Trump, that along course. with President Trump, of course, uh, that ends in genocide and mass yes. murder. That's on the pyramid of white supremacy. To give you a sense, of, this is why when Google employees or when Facebook employees censor something on the right and we get all upset there's a little bit of this like wait wait, what do you mean like we're just we're just protecting people from violence or something you said what do you mean protecting you know i i disagree on vax mandates so you're protecting people from violence like this is insane it's because of the indoctrination that occurs in the company and of course outside the company as well but here's just one uh ibram ibram x kendi we've all heard of this fellow now very prominent critical race theorist he, in one of the video lectures that Google is training its employee, making its employees watch, he says, quote, to be raised in the United States is to be raised to be racist and to be raised to be racist is to be raised to almost be addicted to racist ideas. End quote. A, a, a completely insane thing to say. Yes. It's totally insane to say. And look, if you are looking at evidence I'm not sure there has ever been a least racist country in the history of the world than the United States. Are we perfect? No. But name me any other country in the history of the world where people like this lunatic can get paid and get fabulously wealthy by saying how awful America is. I'm not sure there's any country that's ever existed where there is so much freedom that you are able to make yourself fabulously wealthy by talking about how awful America is. Like, these corporations are paying these guys tens of thousands of dollars to come in and lecture their employees about things that are fundamentally untrue. And I think that there has been, this is true of all propaganda, something I know of from the work I did in intelligence and the history of intelligence studies and how the KGB and how various foreign governments uh, and, and, and also some allied governments do propaganda and have really in the last hundred years when there's been mass media. If you just keep the repetition going, Clay, it, it, it does seep in. This is it's like advertising, right? I mean, yes. repetition is key to rewiring the way people think about things. So while it may have started out with a lot of this work as being a kind of woke insurance, right? Oh, I we we're, we're not racist at this company. We paid so and so to come we in got and tell white us white CEOs right. who are worried, and but, so it's like a, it's like a racket. But right? I think yes. the change has been in the last four or five years, and yes, with the rise of Trump as well, uh, this coincided with it. Now you have true believers, not just in the HR department and the diversity and inclusion department. But as the senior officers of these companies, I mean, as the people, as the CEOs, as the people who are actually calling the shots in a lot of major corporations, they believe this stuff. And, Clay, I just want to note they have a ready built excuse for why you and I don't believe it. This is from Rufo's thread again, Christopher Rufo at City at City Journal. Um, Denial of racism is proof that a person is racist. Just so you know. (laughs) <laughs> There's literally nothing you can say, and this is basically the foundation of the Democratic Party now. Everything is racist. 